<laughs> Wendy Rodrigue here. I am at the Sheraton New Orleans Hotel on Canal Street. And uh, we are here with a masterpiece of not only work by George Rodrigue, original masterpiece by George Rodrigue, but also a masterpiece in modern American art. And that is what is affectionately known as the Rodrigue Steinway. It is one of George's last great creations. Um, the way that this came about was a donation of a 1913 Steinway piano by Steinway and Company. As you can see right here, Steinway and Sons. And it was all in pieces and badly in need of restoration. And Steinway and Company sent the piano to Hall Piano Company here in New Orleans. And they spent many months, I think, perhaps even up to a year or more, restoring and repairing and resurrecting that, well, now 110-year-old fabulous piano. So Hall, uh, and as I recall, Hall Piano Company donated that work, which is tremendous. I mean, all of the intricate parts, every bit of it. Another donation that was made was the incredible artwork of George Rodrigue. Rodrigue actually hand-painted this entire piano. Yeah. He spiraled and swirled music around the sides. Now the spiral, as we know, is perhaps one of the oldest symbols in art. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's on the cave paintings. It goes all the way back. But here, Rodrigue, you know, it can be used for all kinds of symbolism. Uh, Rodrigue used it for everything from the cosmos to the sun to imagination and here to music spiraling it around with the blue dog getting mixed and all of these bright colors. And then the reason he painted this big blue dog on the underneath is because he was, he was thinking about the musician playing the piano and he wanted them to have like a surprise and a show also to look at as they played the music in this great, brilliant dog. And let's look at the, the top of the cover. Here we have a real emphasis on the spiral. Um, just magnificent. I mean, the way that George designed this, the way that he, um, as a, of course, brilliant colorist, um, interwove these dynamic contemporary designs and colors all into something his own. The piano was brought to George, uh, the different pieces of the piano, while Hall was working on it in uh, early 2012. As I recall, he started on it in February 2012. He actually had to work on it in a garage because it would not fit anywhere else for him to paint on it. You can imagine how awkward this was. So he was constantly bending and sitting at different heights. and. I mean, it was very, very awkward to paint this. The way that he painted the lid is that was removed and came to his studio, and he painted it both up on a giant wooden easel and also flat on a large table. He worked on it both ways, but very heavy, very awkward. But again, bending down to paint everything, very difficult. So, what I remember about this so personally in addition to what I've just shared with you. George started working on this in February of 2012. He finished it in May 2012. And as he was working on it, I mean, almost every day in the garage, he would come up to bed at night and he would lie in bed and he would go, Wendy, rub my arm. And he was holding his shoulder like this, rub my arm. And I would rub it and rub it and it hurt every night. So we started going to the doctor to check on that, of course. And uh, the doctor said, oh, George, that's just bursitis, and went giving pills. You know, George was one of these people that everybody wanted to be around because he was always happy and up. He was very down to earth. Um, and he also always had some exciting project to share. And of course, in those months, it was all about this. So we would go to the doctor, and the doctor would get all excited to hear about the piano, and George would laugh and talk. And, and I would say, but what about his shoulder? And it was late May that they discovered the tumor in his shoulder, and that is what it was all that time. And of course, that um, 
That was his lung cancer, which by the time they found it was stage four. George and I then went off uh, to Houston at the end of May in 2012, while the piano went back to Hall Piano Company, and they spent the summer putting this piano with George's amazing creative paintings all together and finishing up the inner workings. While they were doing that, George and I were in uh, Houston at Methodist Hospital for three months, where George had intensive uh, chemotherapy and radiation treatments for his cancer. When we returned that fall to Louisiana, um, the piano was completed and it began touring to help raise money for the LSU School of Music to make it a Steinway school, an official Steinway school. Um, might have been a hundred pianos or something they were buying. There was a lot of them, I can't remember for sure. But anyway, that indeed happened and all kinds of wonderful musicians played this piano raising funds for that cause. And indeed, inside of the piano, they came and signed it. You can see, in fact, uh, there's Urban Mayfield here. There's Ellis Marcellus Jr., who played it at the Joy Theater that fall in a beautiful tribute concert to Rodrigue. There's uh, Billy Joel is on here, uh, Harry Connick Jr. And of course, one of the ones who played it most often was Alan Toussaint, who usually played it over at the at the Mint, the New Orleans Mint. So um, quite incredible. People always felt very honored to play it. We had friends who played it too, and that was always um, a real a real honor. David Seary in Florida, he got to play it. We actually brought it to Florida for some fundraisers, and I don't know, it was just. Um, it kind of took on a life of its own, right? And, and became really, really magical in only the way that George could do. He was very happy and pleased with the piano. He would love that it is here on public display for people to see and enjoy. Please come to the Sheraton New Orleans Hotel and check it out. They actually have a unique collection uh, on view right now of unusual pieces, including if you can see through the bushes over there, but you'd have to walk around. It's, it's visible from the front window. One of George's dynamic large-scale sculptures in steel, chrome, and aluminum. And also in the lobby here currently is the Blue Dog Hog, the motorcycle that George painted back in, I believe it was 95. Um, thank you for letting me visit with you. Um, to me, George lives on in so many ways. Uh, through his stories, through his spirit, through his art, and certainly through dynamic creations like this. Happy Jazz Fest, y'all. Happy Spring. Thanks for listening.